Okay, so this is Fizz 2320 Computing 2, and in this video I'm going to talk you through the process for submitting work for your mini-assessments on the module. Okay, so as I'll covered in the introductory lecture to the module, um, during semester one you have three mini-assessments that are due. Um, so these happen um, in weeks, um, yeah, the materials given out in week one, uh, five and nine, and the work is due in at the end of weeks three, seven and eleven. So actually you get about two and a half to three weeks to go and do the um, to do the material to do each mini assessment in. So the work will come out as part of the task sheets um, for each for the relevant weeks when they're handed out. So um, the first one will come out with a week one task sheet, um, computer lab task sheet for, for that week. Um, and on the material for that week you'll also see there's a link given that takes you to the module website where you can go and hand in the work. So one of the important things to say about the mini assessments is that they are um, just like undergraduate uh, labs they are compulsory that you do them in order to pass the module. So what I mean is it doesn't matter how many marks you get um, if you haven't submitted um, an attempt for each mini assessment you can't actually pass the module in the sense you don't get the credits. So it's very important that you actually go and do the each mini assessment. If you are ill um, during the time of the mini assessment then various different things happen depending on how long you're ill for. So if you're ill for less than a week then um, you just need to go and submit the the mini assessment. Um, so it's probably a good idea not to leave it until the very, very last minute in case you hadn't been ill on the last few days before the assessment is due. If you're ill for between one week and two weeks, then um, if you're not able to do your university studies for that length of time, you need to get a doctor's note anyway. Um, so you should take your doctor's note to the uh, physics taught student office um, and ask for an extension to the mini assessment. Uh, and you can get you get an extension of one week um, on the deadline in order to have time to finish it. Um, but you do need to go and take your doctor's note in to the office um, and uh, ask them to go and how you go and complete the paperwork to go and do that. If you're ill for more than two weeks uh, during the time of a mini assessment, then again you'll need a doctor's note. You should take that doctor's note to the student office and. Um, ask for the mini assessment to be waived. Um, so in other words what will happen is we just simply will not count that mini assessment and we'll take the five percent of the marks that you could have got for it and add it to the coursework um, part of the module. So if you do all three mini assessments each one's worth five percent that's fifteen percent overall and your coursework is worth eighty five percent. If we waive mini assessments then it adds the five percent to the coursework instead. Um, the reason you can't get a deadline for more than a week is because I do actually want to give out the answers to how the mini assessment should have been done and obviously I can't go and do that um, if there are still people waiting to go and actually hand in solutions to it. So there is a cut off of a week um, and that's why there is, that, why that's there. Okay so the task sheet, um, the PDF task sheet will tell you all about what you have to go and do um, for the coursework. Um, and explain what the problem is you're trying to solve and then here you'll get the link to the mini assessment um, site. So it takes you to the module website. If you're not already logged in then you'll have to log in with your uh, username and university computer ID uh, and password and then um, it'll take you a page which will explain what you need to go and do. So for this first mini assessment it's going to ask you to put in five prime numbers um, that are bigger than a certain number um, and um, to put them in there uh, they're just separated by commas um, if you do something different and say don't have a comma there um, when you hit submit it'll complain at you and tell you they should be separated by commas uh, and commas and no spaces just commas um, so if you do that and you hit submit then if it's worked it'll say submission accepted and there very importantly it'll give you this receipt code so this code here is the same sort of code you get for when you click the attending um, register your attendance in the computer lab sessions um, you should make a note of those because it's your proof that you have in fact submitted 
um, a solution to the problem. Um, uh, so if there's any question at all as to whether you did or didn't successfully submit an answer, I'm going to ask you for your um, for your submission code. So do do make a note of those. Um, uh, if you want to, you can go back um, and you could keep on submitting answers, any answers you want to, up until the um, uh, the deadline. In fact, actually, they'll let you keep on going for a week after the deadline, but I wouldn't do that because if you haven't got an extension, you're going to lose marks. So keep submitting up until the deadline if you want to change your answer. That's absolutely fine. We'll just mark the last one um, that you submit, um, uh, and then um, that will be the, th the mark you get. After the, um, the end of the uh, deadline and the week of possible extensions, uh, after the solutions have been released on the Minerva site, then if you go back here and click on the, the link again, then instead of giving you the page where you can submit new work, it'll give you a page which will tell you what you put in, what you scored, and some feedback. So in the case of the prime numbers, it'll tell you whether or not things were or were not prime numbers, and whether or not they were the, one of the five prime numbers it thought you should have given it. Um, and then that's the basis of, of, of how you get the mark. And you'll see here it explains the marking scheme um, for this particular mini assessment. Um, I do encourage you to have a close read of the, of the marking schemes for these because it's very easy to go and lose marks um, by not paying attention to what the marking scheme is actually asking you for. Um, the point about these mini assessments is they're all about um, developing the skills, giving you a toolbox of, of programming skills that are then going to be the things you're going to need to go and use for the coursework. So they're all really essential skills for um, doing the coursework for the module and the coursework for the module is designed to be the sort of typical sort of problem that you might be facing during say a project or uh, an advanced lab depending whether you're doing BSc or MPhys um, courses. So that's uh, that's all you really need to go and know about the mini assessments. Um, hopefully everything will be straightforward. Do pay attention to the deadlines um, and uh, that is all we have to go and tell you.